Well, greetings, YouTube. You're with Got That Funk, and this is a video response to Patrick McDavid and his video series, How to Improve the Voting System in the U.S. Hiya, Patrick. My name is Paul. I want to thank you for initiating this conversation. I think it's an important one to have because if we're ever going to fix the political situation in America, fixing the voting system is a pretty good place to start. And I think you've come up with some interesting ideas. I'm going to link your video in my description box down below for anybody who wants to see it for context, even though I will be covering most of the points you raise uh, in this video. And Patrick, I do have my own ideas about how we might be able to improve the voting system in the USA. However, I'm going to save those for a probable future video response. I want to see what other ideas you come up with. Uh, this video here that you're watching now is simply a response to your second video in the series in which you discuss the first of your ideas about how to improve the voting system. And the first of your ideas is that people should have to earn the right to vote. Now, before I even talk about the, uh, the actual detail of your ideas, Patrick, I've got to say, with all due respect, that, uh, and I'm not playing a, a game of semantics here, if you have to earn the right to vote, it's not a right anymore. It's a privilege at that point. Rights are not bestowed by any outside entity. Citizens proclaim their rights. The government is entitled to uphold and protect our rights, not to bestow them on us. They don't give us the right to vote. We proclaim the right to vote by virtue of being citizens. It's an important distinction to make. If you have to earn the right to vote, you are automatically shifting the balance of power away from the individual and to the institution of government. Okay, so I think that's a really important philosophical uh, problem I've got with your idea. But let's talk about the practical problems and, 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 and a little bit more about the principal problems as well. Um, you talk about earning the right to vote by virtue of contributions to society. I think it's important to contribute to society, of course, but I don't think voting should be contingent on it. I think citizenship is the appropriate criteria for the right to vote. Whether someone is a naturalized citizen or whether they were a citizen by virtue of birth, Either one is fine. As long as they're actually a citizen of the United States, I think they should have the right to vote in the United States. Non-citizens, I think, shouldn't really have a vote. Whether they pay taxes or not isn't necessarily relevant. Uh, paying taxes is not an admission ticket um, to democracy. Most of your idea about earning the right to vote is contingent on paying taxes. And it's not just that people can earn the right to vote by paying taxes, because that might imply that everybody still only gets one vote. According to your idea, the more you pay in taxation, the more votes you would accrue, similar to a shareholder in a company. But uh, if we're going to have a free and fair society, everybody has to be equal. Your idea is inherently unequal. It would give the very wealthy who have to pay more taxes an incredible advantage over people who pay less taxes or no taxes at all. In fact, people who pay no taxes at all and who have done no military service, have done no public service in terms of being a fireman or a policeman or any of the other examples you gave, if they didn't have a degree, etc., they would not be able to vote at all. Public policies defect, uh, affect poor people just as much as they affect people who are more affluent. And yet, in your example, the poor would have virtually no voice at all. They would be completely disenfranchised. I also think by making it unequal, i.e. someone who pays 100000 or more in taxation every year gets 100 votes accrued to their name, whereas somebody who paid 10000 only gets 10 votes accrued to their name. They could get more by doing other kinds of service, but basically that's the gist of what you were saying. So for every 10 of me, if I'm paying 10, 10, if I get 10 votes, I would only equal to one wealthy person. That's inherently unequal, and in my opinion, therefore, inherently un-American. Um, it's my opinion, Patrick, that the concepts of equality, liberty, and justice are intertwined. And if you diminish any one of those three qualities, you diminish the other two by extension. Um, social cohesion depends on social justice. And if we're going to institutionalize disenfranchisement, which is what you're talking about here, I don't see how that's an improvement. Because 
if say say I say I have accrued twenty votes to my name, am I really going to be bothered about voting when I know that my vote won't really stack up compared to all the people who were much more affluent than me? I think your idea would have an adverse effect on voter turnout. So I don't see how it's an improvement on voter turnout, and I don't see how it's an improvement in terms of just pure democracy. Um, you make no case for why your system is actually an improvement on the current system. You've made some interesting ideas and talked about you know, how they might work, but I don't see why they're an improvement, and I can definitely see disadvantages. The disadvantages being, as I say, it shifts the, the, the balance of power to the government by making the government capable of bestowing us our right to vote uh, rather than us being endowed it by virtue of being born. Um, and also, some people would have more of a say than others. You make no case for why the wealthy should have more of a say in public policy than the less affluent. No case whatsoever. How is it imp an improvement, Patrick? I can't see how it's an improvement. Um, last but not least, um, the concept of democracy, in my opinion, depends on free and fair elections. Well, if you have to pay taxation to gain or accrue votes, it's not free. And if some people's votes are worth more than others, it's not fair. Also, equally important, is it's not anonymous. A fair election and a free election depends on anonymity in the voting booth. If the government can trace the votes to the people doing the voting, we're walking on very thin ice. Uh, anonymous voting is one of the central components to a free and fair election. And if someone has accrued, say, 100 votes to their name, the only way they can cast them as 100 as opposed to casting them as 1 is if we know who they are and why they have accrued that many votes. So you could directly trace what people, who was voting for what, and there's an incredible danger that that system could be corrupted and political crimes could be uh, punished uh, if you didn't cooperate with uh, or didn't vote the right way. So yeah, um, I think your idea is interesting, but unfortunately I can't agree with any of it. I'm really sorry. Um, I do look forward to further installments from your series, and I'd like to hear what you have to say about the thoughts I've raised. Um, so please leave a comment. A video response would be equally welcome, and feel free to be as candid with me as you like. You can't offend me. Okay? To you, Patrick, and to all my viewers, I hope your reality and your aspirations are well aligned.